When I think of Houston Texans wide receivers, guys such as Andre Johnson and DeAndre Hopkins immediately come to mind. Those two were both absolute superstars in the NFL, and after Hopkins left, the Texans wide receiver room became pretty bare. Not only was the wide receiver room bare, but pretty much every position became bare. Deshaun Watson was not allowed to play, they didn't have a true number one running back, and the defense was lacking a lot of talent after J.J. Watt left and other guys also fled the roster. In today's video, I want to take a microscopic look though at one position group, the wide receiver room. The Texans desperately need help at that spot, and today we're going to preview their wide receivers, talk about all the different options they have, and I'll give you the truth about the receiver room. Is it as bad as people think, or is it actually secretly underrated? Let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So as you know, we are a college football channel here, and I don't typically talk about NFL, but I'm going to turn this into a college football spin as well. The first guy we need to talk about, who is the definite star of the bunch, is Brandon Cooks. Cooks was not a big time recruit, as he originally flipped from UCLA to Oregon State, and while he was there, he was pretty incredible. In total, he caught 226 passes for 3,272 yards and 24 touchdowns, and in his junior year, he won the Abolitnikoff Award while becoming an All-American. From there, he was taken in the first round of the 2014 NFL Draft, as he went with the 20th overall selection to the Saints. After a couple of years there, and some time with the Patriots and Rams, he settled in with the Texans in 2020 and has been really good for them. In the last two years, he's caught over 80 passes in those two seasons, and he's gone for over a thousand yards and six touchdowns in each. He's the bona fide star of this bunch, but outside of him, who do they have? That next guy is Nico Collins. If you're a Michigan or a Big Ten fan, then you definitely remember this guy. As coming out of high school, he was a four-star recruit and decided to commit to Jim Harbaugh and the Spartans. 2017, he really wouldn't play, but in 2018, he'd emerge. He caught 38 passes for 600 yards and six touchdowns, and then in 2019, he caught 37 passes for 729 yards and seven touchdowns. Because of that, he was seen as an NFL prospect, but when 2020 was hit with a major roadblock, he decided to opt out and prepare for the NFL draft. He was seen as a guy who didn't produce that much, but was going to translate to the NFL, and that is exactly what he did as a rookie. He was drafted in the third round with the 89th overall pick by the Texans, and he was a good player for them. He caught 33 passes for 446 yards, and even caught his first career touchdown. I expect him to be the number two option for Davis Mills, and the number three option will be a rookie. Alabama has been producing a lot of great receivers over the last few years, and John Mechie III was just the next one in line. He was actually originally born in Taiwan and suffered a condition that almost didn't allow him to play football. Thankfully, after blowing up into a four-star recruit in the Maryland area, he committed to Alabama to play football. As a true freshman, he'd play in all 13 games, registering four catches for 23 yards. In 2020, he'd break out after Jalen Waddle got hurt as he caught 55 passes for 916 yards and six scores. In 2021, he was by far the number one option on the team, but no one saw Jamison Williams coming. Mechie finished with a career-high 96 receptions for 1,142 yards and 8 touchdowns, but his season would end early as he got injured towards the end of the year. This really wouldn't affect his draft stock that much though, as he was seen as a guy who would translate really well to the NFL. Because of that, the Texans decided to take him in the second round with the 44th overall pick. I think he's the kind of guy who will play right away, and he's going to produce. I think he's going to have better numbers than Collins did as a rookie, and right now, I know not to bet against a Bama-made receiver, so Mechie could be a really fun player for them, and I'm very curious to see how he is going to do in this offense. So right now we have a solid first three group of receivers, but who do they have after that? Well, the fourth guy I think is going to make the roster is Chris Conley. Just like Mechie, this guy was born overseas, except he was born in Turkey instead of Taiwan. This guy was a pretty big deal coming out of high school and decided to commit to Mark Rick at Georgia. While he was there, he had three productive seasons. As a junior, he got a career high 40 passes for 651 yards and four touchdowns. And then in 2014, he caught 36 passes for a career high 657 yards and eight touchdowns. As we know, Georgia is more of a running team, so he put up pretty good numbers in that system, and he was going to go pretty high in the NFL draft. He ended up getting taken with the 76th overall pick in the third round by the Kansas City Chiefs, and he really didn't get much of an opportunity there. After that, he went to the Jaguars for two years before he signed with the Texans, and had a decent year there last year. He'll likely be the fourth or fifth man on the roster, and this guy is starting to get somewhat old, so I don't think he has the highest ceiling in the world, but he's a solid option for them. After that, we have another guy who is pretty old in Chris Moore. Believe it or not, when he played for Cincinnati, he was a part of the Big East. He then played three more years for the Bearcats, finishing with over 119 catches for 2,000 yards and 26 career touchdowns. Because of that, he was good enough to get drafted into the NFL, 
as he was taken with the 107th overall pick in the fourth round by the Baltimore Ravens. In March of last year, he signed a deal with the Houston Texans and was bumped up and down from the practice squad. He finished last year with 21 catches for 227 yards and two touchdowns and should be able to make the roster. So that brings the Texans wide receiver room to five players right now, and I believe one more will make the roster. Who will that end up being? It's gonna come down to Philip Dorsett, Jalen Camp, Davion Davis, Damon Hazleton, Johnny Johnson, and Drew Estrada. Philip Dorsett was a first round pick to the Colts back in the day, and he found himself playing at the end of the season, but he doesn't have much upset anymore, and I think he'll get cut. Jalen Camp was a late round pick at a Georgia Tech, and despite not producing there, he might have an opportunity to make the roster, but I don't think that's going to happen. Davion Davis was a star player at Sam Houston State, and he is a sneaky good player who might have an opportunity to make the roster. Damon Hazleton played both at Virginia Tech and Missouri, and I don't see him as anything more than a practice squad player. I don't think Drew Estrada will play. After that, you're gonna have Johnny Johnson, who is an undrafted free agent from Oregon, and we all know his production was a little bit underwhelming, but he has the athletic potential to be good, and I thought he was one of the better undrafted receivers in the country. So that would mean a roster that includes Brandon Cooks, Chris Conley, John Mechie, Nico Collins, and Chris Moore. It's not bad, but it's definitely not in the top half of the NFL. While you do have a bona fide star in Brandon Cooks, John Mechie would have to have a huge year, and Nico Collins would have to unleash all his potential for them to really be taken seriously. You also have to remember they have a second year quarterback, they don't have a great offensive line, and they don't even have a starting running back right now. And there's a lot of question marks everywhere, so how much production could they even have? I am no NFL expert though, so you're gonna have to let me know what I got right and wrong. What do you think of the 2022 Texans wide receiver room? Who is your favorite player here? Who has the potential to surprise us? And what NFL topic or player should I do next? I don't typically do videos like this, but I thought I would test it out. And if you enjoyed it, please show your support with a comment and a like, as that would tell me to make more videos like this. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe if you are new and love football content, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.